Hi everyone and welcome back to our player skill menu tutorial series. We're in episode 3 now and so far we've made our character show their skills on the screen using some UI. We've made it so they can cast that spell along with some animation and visual effects and show the case how that separation between the player and the skill system works. In this episode though we're going to add the cooldown. So the ability to make it so we can't just keep spamming the same button over and over again and also show that cooldown on top of our button so we can't just guess to the player what they're going to do. They can actually see for themselves. So let's take a look at how we do this and jump straight in. Okay, so a cooldown. Now, loads of ways of doing this. I'm going to show you a way that I quite like doing this. So on the skill base class, this is the base class, parent class of all our skills. Now, one thing to know about actors is they have a lifespan. Now, by default, their lifespan is set to zero, which means it will just live on forever. But we can change this. We can change this to whatever we like. If I change it to one second, it will last for just one second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever it may be. So let's change it for two seconds. Okay, that means that this thing will live in the world for two seconds and then disappear. Now, the side effect of that means is that I can actually use that to track and manage whether ability has been cast recently and also track and manage how much time it has left so what i'm going to do here is add a variable to my skill base which would be our lifespan or not lifespan the cooldown time sorry cooldown time and that'll be set to a float i'm going to default that to two and i'll go over to my construction script and the construction script is a script that plays right at the beginning when this thing is spawned in. So not when it's begun play, but literally before that. So on here, I'm going to take my cooldown time and set the lifespan of the actor to that cooldown time. Okay, next, we're going to go back to our character. So on our player character, when we spawn in the skill, we get this return value. This return value is a reference to this skill that we've just fired off. So on the return value here, I'm going to promote this to a variable. And this is going to be called the skill bottom uh, ref. Okay, skill bottom ref. And what I can do if I move this along is right at the start of triggered is drag out my skill bottom ref do a get and then right click on this and convert to validate get. So when I put this into triggered and plug is not valid into the spawn actor, it means it will only cast it if this actor is no longer about, which at the start it doesn't exist. So therefore it will fire off at the first hit, but then it will, it will persist until it doesn't and then allow us to do it again. So let's just test that theory out. I'm gonna go push play, I'm gonna cast my spell, and immediately try and cast it again. Nothing happened. But it's been two seconds now, so I've hit again. Away it goes. Okay, that's all well and good, but how do we actually get to show that on our UI? Well, our UI can look at our character and look at the reference we have. So I'm gonna go to my skill slot here. I need to tell this button here to look at a reference on our player character. Okay, that's all I need to tell it to do. So let's go over to a quick skill quick slot and go to the graph. In here, it needs to be a reference to that. So let's go skill actor reference. This would be a skill base object reference. Make that editable. And I want to compile that. So this thing, I can't easily set because if I go to the skill menu uh, here, as you can see, I can click on it, but it won't, I can't pick anything from it. So what I need to do is get a property reference from another character, in this case, a player character reference, a third person character reference. So let's go ahead and show how to do that because we can't do it from here. So where do we do it? Now, in order for us to reference a particular skill in our character, these need to have a, a way of referencing it. Okay, and it's a way of communicating to the player and from the player what that ability is and how it can get from it. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create on our widget here the ability for it to listen to the player whenever a skill is created. Okay. So I'm going to go to the graph here. And we're going to add a um, on construct. No, sorry, not on there. So I go to the, the quick slot button itself. So the actual individual button. Apologies. And in here, we want to have on the construct get player character. And we need to cast to our third person character. And that's because <clears throat> we're doing initial bindings with it. So we need to have that in there. Now, in terms of the character, we need to set up the event dispatcher. So let's go back to the player character over here. Okay. And currently we've got our skill bottom ref in like this menu here. And we could store them as individual elements pretty easily. But what would be a better way of doing this is actually storing them in some sort of way of map to control what they're doing. So we're going to have a rebel and there'll be skill map. And we're just going to introduce for now, but mapped here towards the <clears throat> the skill base actor point. Okay. So when this is get created here, and we create the widget, uh, create the uh, the skill, we get the skill ma map and add to it the reference here. The index will change based upon what skill we're using here. So rather than doing the get like here, we'll take the skill map and we'll do find, in this case zero, because that's going to count for our bottom one, and we'll check that this is valid. If it's not valid, it'll go down here, and away it goes. Now when I do this, I need to tell, make an event dispatcher so my widget knows what the hell's going on. So let's go to our event dispatchers undo on skill cast and on the variables here we're going to pass through our skill map uh, which will be sorry our uh, index not index integer map to our space skill Okay, we're going to call this and we're going to pass through our skill map. So that happens on every one of our uh, skill calls. The thing that will change will be the zero here. It will change from zero, one, two, three, and four. Whatever, how many we're going to do. So that's now done. If I go back to my skill quick slot, we've got this construct. We can now go from the third person character and bind on skill cast. Create an event for this. And we'll create a matching event on skill cast. And this is going to look for a particular index. So we want to find, in this case, zero. And we're going to get this value here. Okay, this is the current skill that's being played. And we want to get its lifespan. Okay, so if I go and do get lifespan, that'll tell me how much time it has left is what I want. So we're going to get a lifespan here and I'm going to actually let's uh, let's promote that to a variable and do skill and we'll come out of there like that. That's all we need. So the integer for the find here is the index. We're going to promote that to a variable call it index and make that editable. So the index now can be changed on that skill menu. So I'm going to go back to that skill menu. And for the bottom one, we can leave it at zero. But then we'll go around in a clockwise fashion and increment the index here by one. Okay, so zero, one, two, and three. That means each one of these slots will get the correct skill that's assigned to them. Now to display this on the on the shape here directly we're going to have a bar let's do a progress bar and we'll make it fill the invaluable space so we'll do that and 
we want it to fill not from left to right here, but from top to down. Okay, so top to bottom. You'll do something like this. Okay. But actually, I'll do bottom to top. That would be better. Because we're going to fill it down like this. Ooh, that. There we go. Okay, so um, let's change the styles of these things. So I'm going to go to style, background image. I'm going to change this to none. So I'm going to change box here to none. And then for the fill image, I'm going to change this to rounded box and change the tint here to have an alpha of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, something like that. And I'm going to make it darker. So I'm going to go to fill color opacity and change it to black. Okay. Now this could be also something extra fancy uh, with using some material stuff, but we'll keep it simple just for the purpose of this. So there's our percentage bar. Okay, so I'm going to change that there to bar cooldown like this and make sure it is variable. Back on the graph, I'm going to go to the tick event because we want this to update. Uh, not Sorry, not on here. We want to go to the... Yeah, the tick event of the quick slot itself. So tick. There we go. We're gonna take our skill variable. Uh why is this going wrong? Oh, it's going a bit funny. Let's just close that and bring it back up again. Quick slot. There you go, don't know what happened there. Weird little bug things. Um, yeah, so event tick, we take the skill, right click on this one, convert validated get. So we put that in there. And if this is valid, that's where we want the bar to update. So we go to bar cooldown, set percent. And it is a percentage, so it, is, it does have to be normalized. We take the skill, get the lifespan. And we also want to get its cooldown time. That's the value we set up right at the start. And I want to normalize that to a range. The range max being the cooldown time. And the lifespan is how much life it's had. Uh, has got left. And we'll put that into the percentage there. Hit compile. And go back to our scene. And you can see the bar now deplete when it is animated. Okay. We're just change our default starting percentage here to zero. So yeah, we don't get that same problem. I'm not being visible. And there we go. A simple cooldown method. So there you go, a cooldown method that is pretty simple and quick to put together. Now, this is specifically a slot-based cooldown. So basically, you're cooldown via the slot, not the skill. So if I was to have that buy for skill in another slot, for example, it would fire off the same, okay? I could I can do one and then do the other immediately because the cooldowns are affected to the slot, not the uh, ability. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to do it so it can do that. So if I hit the Bifrost in one slot, it will lock it for both slots. And we can go through and show that in the next episode, which you can find over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We find all our videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. Much thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everyone.